Sometime a long while ago when I actually played my 3DS, I took a lot of effort and allowance money to buy eShop cards so that I could buy a bunch of virtual console games. And one series I really wanted to get into on there were the Castlevania games. I bought and played through pretty much all of them and one of those games was Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. I am your host, James, and this week we are going to be taking a look at the final game in the Castlevania NES trilogy, Castle... Oh. Oh wait, I already said the name. Well, that's embarrassing. Anyways, the plot of the game is simple. You play as... Well, I can't really read any of this. I decided to play this game on the Japanese version available in the Castlevania Anniversary Collection, because there's a special sound chip in the Famicom version for better music. Not that it really matters a whole lot to you guys, but I really do like Castlevania music. Ralph Belmondo is the name of your character in this version, but I'm gonna stick with the name Trevor Belmont because that's the American way. The Belmonts were run out of Transylvania a long time ago because the people of the land were afraid of them. But then, Dracula's castle rose again, and they called upon the Belmonts for help. Trevor doesn't actually start the game at Dracula's castle, unlike the first. It starts far away and Trevor has to make his way there. On his way, he comes across a few different people that can help him on his journey. First is Grant, the acrobatic dwarf who can climb along walls and ceilings. Sypha Belnades is a spellcaster who I don't even think I let into my party. Then there is Alucard, whose parentage is unknown, who shoots fireballs at a very short range in front of him. To change between characters, all you have to do is press the select button and wait a few minutes to change your partner. Because this does end up taking a long time, I really only played as Trevor. There are different endings for the game depending on who you have in your party when you beat it. I couldn't tell you what the Alucard ending is because it's in Japanese, but I know that in the Sypha ending it's revealed that she's a girl and they fall in love and marry, continuing the Belmont lineage. I don't know if all three endings are technically canon or not, but they could be. I'm sure I don't need to put too much effort into this section, but the Netflix Castlevania show is at least loosely based on the plot of Castlevania 3, at least before Season 3. Obviously there are liberties taken, but man is that a good fucking show. The gameplay is largely the same as it was in Castlevania 1. Trevor moves around pretty rigidly, not being able to control his midair momentum like other characters tend to, and he can whip his enemies good. There are also sub-weapons, like the cross and the holy water, but those two are really the only good ones. Alongside the new characters, there are also branching paths you can choose between. Sometimes you have to play through both anyways, like you can pick this clock tower to get Grant, but then you have to go through the swamp anyways. Overall, Castlevania 3 is more of the same as the original game. It ignored the RPG elements that the second game had, which is fine by me, and scaled up the scope of the game a bit. As of now, you can play the game on basically everything through the Castlevania Anniversary Collection. I mean, it's only $20, it's already a great deal, and this is one of the best games on the NES. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know I kinda skipped Castlevania 2, but it's really hard to get motivated to play that game, you know? I mean, I enjoy it well enough, but I've gotta be in the right mood. Anyways though, that's for another time. I hope you've yeah. I hope you've enjoyed the video and next week will be Terrell's turn to go, so come join us back here then.